Welcome to the UN Country Club. I'm your host, Dan Purcell. Today we'll be discussing the United Nations bribery scandal involving a UN president and the United Nations scribery scandal involving a UN press club president. First, the bribery scandal. The UN bribery scandal starts in Macau, China, where billionaire real estate developer Ying Lap Singh, aka David Ying, or Mr. Wu, wants to build a supersized UN conference center. Why build the UN center in Macau? When China is so big and you can build anywhere? Well, one reason is Macau is the largest gambling center in the world. That's right. And guess which lovable American is Macau's largest foreign investor? None other than the charming and huggable Las Vegas Sands Casino billionaire and Republican donor Sheldon Adelson. Who, by the way, is reportedly under federal investigation himself for overpayment of a Macau lawyer who is influential with Chinese government officials. Officially named Macau Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, Macau is an autonomous territory on China's southern coast, just 40 miles from Hong Kong. It has its own legislature, laws, court system, and chief executive, but authority resides in Beijing. The UN scandal's central figure, Ying Lap Singh, first gained notoriety with U.S. authorities in the 90s. He surfaced in a Justice Department investigation into foreign money corrupting the Democratic National Committee for the re-election and legal defense fund of none other than our boy Bubba, President William Jefferson Clinton, way down there in Arkansas. Ying sent hundreds of thousands of dollars from Macau to the DNC by way of Yao Lin Charlie Tree, owner of Little Rock's Fulin Chinese Restaurant, one of Bubba's favorites while Arkansas governor. Ying was rewarded with 10 visits to the White House and seats at Bubba's campaign events. Ying resurfaced again last year on a subpoena connected to a lawsuit against Sheldon Adelson and his Sands Casinos by Stephen Jacobs, former CEO of Adelson's Macau China Casinos. Ying is cited as a go-between for bribes of of Chinese government officials for Adelson. Ex-CEO Jacobs was fired by Adelson. He says, for resisting bribery and involvement in organized crime. He says Adelson himself is involved in the illegal activities. Adelson says, quote, Jacobs never uh, Jacobs never became important until he squealed like a pig to government authorities. What are the odds the Justice Department will prosecute odds-loving Adelson? My bet's on Adelson. He's just too rich to jail. Adelson denies ever knowing Ying. Ying was arrested last month in New York City. The charges? He bribed United Nations President John Ash. Plus, he vacationed with four and a half million dollars in cash over the course of several trips to the U.S. Authorities believe he lied to them about how he'd spend it. Ying was released on fifty million dollars bail and placed under house arrest at his multi-million dollar crib in Manhattan. Meanwhile, John Ash, the United Nations 68th General Assembly President, faces tax evasion charges for underreporting almost $1.3 million in income for tax years 2013 and 2014. Most of it earned from Ings bribes. FBI Special Agent Jason P. Alberts says Ash and his wife spent the bribe money lavishly. The Ashes spent $69,000 to join a South Carolina country club $60,000 for Ash's hand-tailored suits, over $50,000 for a pair of Rolex watches, $40,000 for a BMW, and the leftover change of just five grand, they spent that at a New York Gucci store. Ash also received hundreds of thousands of dollars from Ying for presidential parties. In exchange, Ash used his official position at the UN to promote Ying's multi-billion dollar United Nations Macau Conference Center 
Ng would serve as the real estate developer. Ng and Ash arranged large cash payments for government officials in Ash's Caribbean home country of Antigua. For starters, the greasers paid off Antigua's prime minister. But more were planned. In an email cited by the FBI, UN President Ash recommended other top officials to participate in the greasy schemes, like his brother and an old class and an old high school pal. His email read, My brother heads the Financial Services Regulatory Commission. It's the independent authority responsible for approving the establishment of offshore banks. And the Minister of Finance, he's a high school classmate of mine. That's right, my man. Prez Ash going to hook you up with some bling, bro. You know what I'm talking about? Cha-ching. That's right. Ng and Ash were joined in the alleged conspiracy by Dominican Republic's UN representative, Francis Lorenzo. They approved good old Francis as honorary president of South South News, a promotional news site listing United Nations relations stories, sourced from outside news providers. The FBI says Ng wired over $12 million to Lorenzo's South South News New York bank account. Most of the $12 million was distributed throughout the United Nations system. And like the UN Presidente Ash, Lorenzo made sure his bro back home got in on the action. While in the Dominican Republic, Lorenzo's brother got a monthly allowance from E. That's right, bro. Lorenzo, acting as honorary president of South South News, gave some of the $12 million slush fund to, get this, my glad fly friends at the United Nations Press Club, known formally as United Nations Correspondents Association, or UNCA. Ng's payments to the press club paid off handsomely. Ng got a much coveted personal photo op with United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. That's right, the press club arranged for a side room at its annual awards gala. Ban Ki-moon was ushered into the room to press the flesh with money givers like Ng. Plus, Ng's South South News phony website, got an award from the press club. That's right, Ng, Pre Ng greases the UN press club, gets a picture with Ban Ki-moon, and his shady news outlet gets an award. How can the Gladfly press provide objective reporting if it's taking money from and giving photo ops and awards to the group knowingly engaged in bribery? The Gladflies should be investigating bribery, not condoning it. To me, that's scribery, plain and simple, and it shows bad judgment. Here's another example of bad judgment. The press club almost accepted big screen TVs for the club's newly remodeled UN club room from electronics giant Samsung, based in Ban Ki-moon's home country of South Korea. I say almost because the deal was halted after Matthew Russell Lee of Inner City Press exposed the smelly plan. Here's the deal. Lee tipped off, Lee was tipped off about the TVs by a whistleblower. So he stopped by the press club room during its remodel. There he saw a big screen TV and technicians installing wiring. Not good. Should the Gladflies accept free TVs from Samsung? Especially about the time newspaper headlines critical of Samsung or making the news? Here's one from The Guardian. Quote, South Korean electronics firm, Apolo uh, let's see, oh, I'm sorry, Samsung promises to compensate factory workers who suffered cancer. South Korean electronics firm apologizes but does not admit chemicals in the factories cause disease. Why aren't the UN Gladflies reporting on the poisoning of Samsung workers instead of dealing for free big screen TVs for their club room? Following Lee's inquiry into the slimy deal, the donation from Samsung was reworked. The TVs would be donated to the South Korea mission, not directly to the press club. Then the mission would donate the TVs to the UN's Department of Public Information, which would then loan the TV, the big screen TVs, to the press club for use in their large, newly remodeled club room at the UN. But later, after it became clear this would still look really bad, the press club's president, Pamela Falk, a CBS News 
foreign affairs analyst based at UN headquarters offered a, deni offered a denial during a UN press conference. She denied the press club has, or ever had, new Samsung TVs in the club room, thus closing the book on what was undoubtedly a harebrained idea planned out at an official press club board meeting, as reflected in the meeting minutes. Press club president and CBS reporter Pam Falk faced criticism in another questionable incident last year. It was discovered the press club's Twitter account had fake followers. And Falk's own Twitter account had them too. Not just a few, but thousands. Over a 10-day period in 2014, the press club's Twitter page surged with new followers from 300 to 5,500. And at the same time, Falk's own Twitter account surged to 9,600 followers. Again, a whistleblower alerted Matthew Lee, who looked into the matter. Matthew discovered most of the new followers had no association with the UN or an interest in journalism for that matter. Another person who researched the followers found many had titles like extremely dominant BBW, foreskin lover, hashtag BBH, and the finest erotic events and vacations. It was asserted the fake Twitter followers had been purchased. Within days of the issue getting sunshine, the followers to the press club's Twitter account returned to 300, down from 5,500, and Falk's account was taken offline. Falk later returned to Twitter, acknowledging she and the club had fake followers. She asserted she was the victim of an internet bot or something. I'm not sure I buy that. Nobody else seems to buy it either. But that's not all. Another unsavory incident occurred during Falk's UN Press Club presidency on May 1, 2014, the same time Falk's Twitter followers were surging, and on World Press Freedom Day 2014. Falk spoke at a United Nations briefing co-organized by the UN's Department of Public Information and the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. The event was covered on UN television. During her speech, Falk claimed UNCA, her press club, protects journalists. While she was speaking, the UN TV camera briefly switched to a shot of Matthew Russell Lee shaking his head in disbelief based on his own experience of not being protected by the club. When Falk later learned UN TV had cut away from her speech to feature Matthew Lee, she lost it. According to multiple sources, Pamela Falk of CBS complained to the top of the UN Department of Public Information that UN TV dared cut away to a shot of a skeptic during her speech. Subsequently, subsequently, the UN control room got a complaint about their camera angles. It was reported Falk republished a video of the speech with a cutaway of with a cutaway to Matthew Lee edited out. The official UN TV video still shows Lee. Not a good showing by the press club president on World Press Freedom Day at the UN. Not good at all. Well, that about wraps up this show. In closing, I want to leave you with a passage from a 1998 Wall Street Journal article. It provides some insight into the alluring, into the allure of the billionaire UN briber, Ing Lap Singh. In Macau, Mr. Ing's most visible interest is his ownership of the Fortuna Hotel, a garish high-rise in the gambling district featuring 20,000 square foot nightclub with table dancing by strippers as well as a massage parlor and according to its brochure over 30 independent karaoke rooms all luxuriously decorated with the most advanced sound 